evening, everyone, on this Monday, July 20th. How are you? So nice to see everybody here after a nice weekend. Hot, 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 and steamy in New York City. Hope everybody is staying in, or if you're out, you're by the beach or somewhere cool. Yeah, how's everybody doing? Good to see you. Hey, Arlene, how are you? Good to see you. So, all right, I have a new routine, you guys. Hey, Kip, how are you? Great to see you. I have a new routine I have to tell you about. It's pretty funny. Here's what happens. Hey, Eleanor, how are you? Boo Boo, how are you? So here's what happens. After we deinstalled out of the flat iron, I we had two beautiful um, TV Samsungs, very, very large, uh, that uh, were given to us. And anyway, so we had a new TV and two. Anyway, we put one in Jean's office, our den, okay, with a really pretty Ames chair, red, used to be over here, got moved. After dinner, every evening, I turn off the lights, the air conditioning's on, get a glass of wine, and I sit and watch 48 hours. William and Jean are in the other room watching Star Trek or something, or Avatar. I am telling you, my friends, and I say to William, William, turn on the TV for me because, of course, inevitably, it's too difficult. I said, I just need a good murder this evening. Oh, my God. I am having so much fun with these 40-minute shows. I, like, empty my head of the day and just watch people destroy their lives because of greed and selfishness and whatever other issues they can't let go. So interestingly enough, hello, Sam. So good to see you. Hope you had a good time. I know you had a good time camping. Nice to have you back. Um, so um, today I thought for Smart Start. So now I'm being informed. Smart Start is now being informed by 48 hours. How do you like that? It's really crazy. So I want. I thought, oh, we need a good murder mystery. Huh? Smart Start needs a good murder mystery. Let's take a look at uh, David's uh, The Death of Marais. It's such an amazing painting. It's such an amazing painting and such an amazing story. And I wanted to, uh, yes, that is Miss Sam, boo-boo. That's exactly right. Sam Eleanor is on the feed. That's exactly right. So let's take a look at this story and let's take a look at this painting because it really is magnificent. Um, and um, it's also political, and that's what's also so interesting about it. It's how it finds its, well, the, its roots are completely political, but what David does in this case. So The Death of Marais is a 1793 painting by uh, Jacques-Louis David of the murdered French revolutionary leader Jean-Paul Marais. It is one of the most famous images of the French Revolution. David was the leading French painter as well as a Montagnard and a member of the Revolutionary Committee of General Security. So he was highly political himself, the artist. The painting shows the radical journalist lying dead in his bath on 13, uh, July 13, 1793, after his, his murder by Charlotte Corday. Painted in the months after Moray's murder, it has been described by art historian T.J. Clark as the first modernist painting for, quote, the way it looked, it took the stuff of politics as its material and did not transmute it. I have a feeling, my friends, in the next few years, we're going to be taking the stuff of politics again as material. Hey, Charles, how are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you here. So let's look at this painting. Marais was one of the leaders of the Montagnards, the radical faction ascendant in uh, French politics during the Reign of Terror. Charlotte Corday was a Girondin from a minor aristocratic family and a political enemy of Marais, Marais who blamed him for the September massacre. She gained entrance to Marais' rooms with a note promising details of, counter -revolutionary, of a counter-revolutionary ring in Cannes. Marais suffered from a skin condition that caused him to spend so much time in his bathtub. He would often work there. Corday fatally stabbed Marais, but she did not attempt to flee. 
She was later tried and executed for the murder. It is like a real person, Boo Boo. That's exactly the such a great observation. I love my students. My God, my students. Yeah, it's a funny day, right? I'm not a fan of the green. Oh, that green in his bathtub. Yeah. So let's look at this. Let's look at the note. I love the note in his hand. I have a detail of it. Look at the note. And it says, given that I am unhappy, I have a right to your help. Hmm. Let's read about that note. I love it. Look at the fingers. They are so light. They are so real, right? It's just amazing. So as well as being a leading French painter um, of his generation, David was a prominent mountain yard and a Jacobin, aligned with Marais and Robespierre. A deputy of the museum section at the convention, he voted for the death of the king and served on the Committee of General Security, where he actively participated in sentencing and imprisonment of many and eventually presided over um, the section of interrogation. He was also on the P Committee of Public Instruction. So David is really a very, very important figure himself in the French Revolution, which um, is really extraordinary. So I'm going to go back to this figure now. And we're going to talk a little bit about the style of the figure. How about the skin? It's really important to note the skin tones of this, I think. Marais' figure is idealized. For example, the painting contains no sign of his skin problems. His skin appears clean and unblemished. David, however, drew other details from his visit to Marais' res residence the day before the assassination. The green rug, the papers, and the pen. So isn't that interesting? David was there the day before the assassination. If I put my 48 hours hat on, huh? I might have to see if David was okay. Okay. David promised his peers in the National Convention that he would later depict their murdered friend um, uh, writing for the good of the people. The death of Marais is designed to commemorate a personal hero. Although the name Charlotte Corday can be seen on the paper held in Marais' left hand, she herself is not visible. Close inspection of this painting shows Marais at his last breath, when um, Corday and many others were still nearby. Corday did not try to escape, and I have a picture of her. Um, this is hanging, um, yeah, this is too much, right? Uh, no, don't be sorry, I love it. Um, it's, this is hanging in the uh, Royal Museum of Fine Arts in Belgium. Such a great piece. Uh, this, this image doesn't do it justice. I remember sitting in one of my art history classes and seeing it, and my professor had such an amazing image of it. It was. I, I'm wondering, I swear, I feel like I've seen it in person, but I, I didn't go to Belgium, so... I mean, it's just amazing, though, that I remember the image that I saw. Um, therefore, David intended to record more than just the horror of martyrdom. In this sense, for realistic as it is in the details, the painting as a whole from its start is a methodical construction focusing on the victim, a striking setup regarded today by several critics as an awful, beautiful lie. Certainly not a photograph in the forensic scientific sense and barely the simple image it may seem. For instance, in the painting, the knife is not to be seen where Corday had left it impaled in Marais' chest, but on the ground beside the tub. Yeah. Yeah. It's a scary job, right? <laughs> It's a scary job to be a journalist. Oh my God, Sam, especially. I, I mean, can you imagine being a journalist now and all you hear every day is, is the federal government, all of them, talking about fake news and fake news and it's all their fault, everything's all their fault. Oh my gosh, you bring up a good point. So now, where have I seen this arm before, friends? Where have I seen this arm before? Hmm, 
Where have I seen those limbs and that white? Yeah, yeah, thinking about that, that connection. Let's take a look at that. So, how does this painting make me feel? It's interesting that you ask that, Charles. You ask that all the time, and I love that you asked me that, so thank you for that. I think that, let me look at it while I'm talking to you. It, it, it's interesting because there's such a romantic sensibility about this painting, and yet it, there shouldn't be, right? There's a martyr who has died. He had a dangerous job. He's been murdered. I mean, he's in his bathtub. It's pretty gruesome, but there is something incredibly beautiful about it. That's why I liken it to, and not only I, a lot of people have likened it to um, the Pietà, that notion of the dead Jesus, right? And just that kind of, there's also a beauty there to that. And in fact, I named the show that today, right? The death and the beauty. So yeah, I, I kind of love it. Um, the death of Marais is often compared to Michelangelo's Pietà. Note the elongated arm hanging down in both works. David, a mired Caravaggio, especially the entombment of Christ, which mirrors it in drama. Um, let me get that painting for you. I didn't get that. Yeah, I mean, you can see a lot of that um, sensibility of Caravaggio, but a whole different, you know, although it may, the, the drama may feel a little Caravaggio-esque, but the coloring, the, the, the diagonals and the, catas, uh, the chiaroscuro and such, I, I don't see it all but I definitely see the drama of it um, that he's saying. Yeah, let me show you this. Um, yeah, good, it's just great stuff. Here we go, let me transition that. Nice. And then there's a few other of these paintings that I, I wanna show you also. Um, let me just go to, yeah. So let's go back to here. All right, let's take a look some more and let me hear what you're saying about this. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Degas, what do you see? Tell me what you see, Boo Boo, that you're thinking of Degas. Tell me what you see. You're thinking about the diagonals? I'd love to know what you're thinking. David sought to try, oh, um, which mirrors the, yeah, the drama and the light is there of Caravaggio but not let me go back to it one more second let me just go back to it one more second the drama and light is there but not not really his catching of a moment right when you think about it i think this is 20. um he's not catching the moment of the death of Marais, because if he were, he would be, um, he would have the a, a knife in his chest. So he's not catching the moment of the murder. But what he's doing is he's, and there's, a, there's something, yeah, not as profound, or not, it's not that it's not as profound. When I look at this, the drama in here is so heightened. The diagonals, the drama, the, the pulling out of that darkness, that sfumata, that pulling out of uh, the graying and such. And here you have a lighter background. But I completely understand the connection. Yeah, it's really fascinating. So, David sought to transfer the sacred qualities long associated with the monarchy and the Catholic Church to the new French Republic. He painted Marais, Martyr of the Revolution, in a style reminiscent of Christian martyrdom. That you see here. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what else I think about with this? I actually think of, well, it's another David, it's another David piece. Yeah, the death of Socrates. You know, that, that kind of martyrdom. Yes, diagonals. I got it. Don't worry. Yes. Um, don't worry about spelling. We don't worry about spelling. I can't spell. <laughs> it's not even funny. Okay. Um, as Christian art, okay, sorry. 
He painted Marais, um, Martyr of the Revolution, in a style reminiscent of it, with the face and body bathed in a soft, glowing light. And it's interesting because, Charles, that's what I say when I'm saying that there's this romanticism about it. There's this soft, beautiful, glowing light that it's bathed in that this is not. This is much more dramatic light, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Where am I? A, as Christian art has done from the beginning, David also played with multi-leveled references to classical art, suggestions that Paris could compete with Rome as a capital and mother city of the arts and the idea of forming a new kind of Roman Republic appeared to French revolutionaries who often formed David's audience. So I want to look at this piece because this actually shows us a more accurate, I think, depiction of what happened. Wait, where did I put it? Here we go, friends. I had downloaded a whole new computer. Um, Gene upgraded my computer system, so I had to download everything new. There we go. Hey, Leslie, how are you? Happy Monday. Great to see you. Here is the lady in question, Charlay Corday. And so here, she remained in the room after she killed Marais. We see the knife in his chest. This is a painting by Baudry. Um, and it's, it's, it, the chair is tossed over. It's a whole different look. Sam says the light is similar to Vermeer. Yes, Sam, very good. Interesting composition with almost half the canvas empty. Isn't it? Sam, you bring up such a great point. Now I'm remembering Dr. Parker said the same thing. She kept trying to get that out of us, that half the, half the composition is empty. Brilliant, yeah. And look where he signs his name and the name of the composition, right? A. Marais, David, right there. Yeah. And then this piece. So let's see if I can find something about this piece. I know I had it. Other artists have also depicted the death of Marais, sometimes long after the facts, whose work refer or not to David's masterpiece. Among these later works, the Charlotte Corday um, by Baudry, painted in 1860 during the Second Empire, when Marais' dark legend, the angry monster insatiably hungry for blood, was widely sp spread among educated people, depicts uh, Charlotte Corday as a true heroine of France, a model of virtue for the young generations. The versions of Picasso and Munch are less, try are less trying to refer to the original context in itself than to confront modern issues with those of David. And believe it or not, Vic uh, Muniz, I also created um, a version, but I want to show you the Munch version as well. Let's see. Here's the Munch version, which I think is really fascinating. And I also, one of my favorite pieces from this whole little, you know, 48 hours mystery here, that's what I'm going to be. Smart start. Who did it in art history? Was it the wife? Was it the husband? Okay. The, the Corday painting. It is so striking. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, oh, I don't have that last piece. I know I had it. Let me find it again. It was the piece of hers. Oh, I know where it is. Okay, just give me one second because it's such a good piece. Uh, let me see if I can find it, because it's, uh, so Charlotte, her life didn't end well. It never does. You know, if you're going to expect the worst, they're going to be out there committing murder in a bathtub. Here's Charlotte going to her death. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Here's Charlotte going to her death, and there's a good story about that as well. So, and I want to show you, Charlotte wouldn't be Charlotte unless uh, she were also quite egotistical. She had a painting done of her 
right after. Uh, let's find that. I'm getting it. Give me one second. I have a whole new system, so I all of this was set. I was ready an hour early today, getting everything organized. Woke up feeling really great, feeling good. Got a lot of great stuff happening this summer, and then my this is not like helping me. Okay, so here's this. Okay, so. She was a figure in the French Revolution. In 1793, she was executed by the guillotine for the assassination of Marais, who was in part responsible for the more radical course the revolution had taken through his role as a politician and journalist. Marais had played a substantial role in the political purge of the Girardins, with whom Corday sympathized. His murder was depicted in the painting, The Death of Moray, which shows Moray's dead body after Corday had stabbed him in his medicinal bath. Now, what I love about this painting is that she, she had this, this was at her request a few hours before her execution. This is how you go out, my friends. This is how, if you're going to be executed, yes, yeah, she's cute, right? Will's doing really well, honey. Thank you for asking. She's pretty. And if I guess you're going to be executed and it's going to be by guillotine, you want to look like this. I do have to tell you, I admire a woman, as you might have guessed, that can put herself together before her execution. Here is a different uh, portrayal of that. Um, as she's led, it, led from the prison to her execution. But it's, it's really, it's a phenomenal story, right? It's a phenomenal story. And what I think is so important about it is it really is um, this art historical look at politics. At, you know, we don't have this, we have some paintings in American history, like we have the pulling down of the statue of George Washington, but we don't really have this kind of documentation of the American Revolution. The French already had such a longer history of painting and such, and so this becomes a, an amazing documentation of somebody that may have been otherwise forgotten or a minor character in the history books, and that the artist plays such a significant role in it is really amazing as well. But it's, it's, it is, it's a sublime painting. Let me just make it a little taller, wider for you. It's really a gorgeous painting, and as Sam pointed out, that area of empty space couldn't be any more important and necessary to the piece. And then I, I don't, I must have seen it and I just can't remember because even the wound in his upper chest and the, the blood trickling down, it's, it's really stunning, really stunning. So that's how I'm starting the week, friends. You know, Jean's cooking dinner. Okay, he has been, he's had this chicken that he's been working on for two days for this evening. So I'm really excited about it. And then afterwards, I'm going to have to watch a 48 hours mystery again. We may have to do just a week of murder mysteries in art history. We may have to do that. So my friends, uh, Charles says, were artists used like photographers back then? Um, it's interesting that you say that. I'm not sure that they're used like photographers, but there's certainly this idea, Charles, of documenting right, of documenting it, but not for the realism of it, because this is not realistic. This is idealized. Yeah. Um, wow. What Moxie, right? She would have out Instagrammed any contemporary influencers. Yeah, that's why I always tell women too, Leslie, I love that um, comment. You know, we always have this notion, and a lot of it is just trying to get our voices continually heard. That, that women haven't weren't using their voice per, in earlier history. It's simply not true. Women have, have had very powerful positions throughout history. And the more that we can acknowledge that, uh, first of all, 
understand it, then acknowledge it, and then really take it on, the less the movement becomes about we've been victims for so long and more about look how we have empowered ourselves for so long. Yeah, so, yeah. I felt like I've seen it in real life before. So do I, Arlene. Bye, boo-boo. I feel like I've seen it in real life, so I can't, I have to, I don't know. I know I have. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to check on the provenance of it and what museums it's traveled to because I, I know I didn't see it in Belgium, but I know I've seen it. So, friends, um, yeah, me too, right, Sam? It's great stuff. So, everyone, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Sam, it's great to have you back. Leslie, great to have you here and all of our regulars. Yeah, uh, murder mysteries in art history this week. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.